All right, welcome everybody to YouTube Live. My name is Robert with Zenfolio Customer Support, and I just want to say thank you for joining us here on the live Q and A. Um, if this is, is your first time joining us, just give us a shout out in the chat if you're watching on YouTube, or comment on the video if you're watching on Facebook. Say hi. Let us know where you're from. We are glad that you're here, and I look forward to answering your questions uh, about your Zenfolio account and helping you use your account more successfully. Um, so real quick, today is the last day of WPPI, so if you are out and about at WPPI or you're going to be out and about later at WPPI, make sure to go by and see the Zenfolio booth 1143. Like I said, today is the last day. Uh, we're booth number 1143. Make sure to come by and say hi to us if you have a chance. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with a chat question. Looks like... Uh, Thea says, I'm wanting to add videos to my site. Can I? Well, you can do that a couple of ways. It depends on the type of video that you're talking about. So um, you can definitely upload videos into your galleries just like you do photos. And then people can see the videos when they go to your galleries and things like that. Now, there are some specific guidelines that you need to follow when you're uploading the video. And um, if I could get... Um, my moderator shell just to throw out the video guidelines uh, help guide for Thea um, you can check out that link it's going to tell you uh, the size limits uh, the length limits and things like that um, but so you can upload them right into a gallery just like you do photos you just would uh, just go right here let me switch over really quick if you want to upload a video what you would do is you just go either create a new gallery from your dashboard right here or you would go um, to an existing gallery if you wanted to upload the video to an existing gallery click on upload and put that video here um, and then upload it now if you're wanting to show maybe a video that's on YouTube or something like that you can embed the videos into um, custom pages um, and let me just show you how to do that really quick so actually what I'm going to do is let me just go to YouTube really quick and uh, I'm just going to grab the first video I see here. So let's see. Uh, let's just grab. Yeah, let's just grab this one right here. I'm going to grab this one. I have no idea what this video is about. But down here underneath there should be share. And then you should be able to click this embed code right here. And then copy this. And actually what you could do then is on your website. You can go to website right here. Go to custom pages and then create a new custom page uh, just title this video or whatever um, and then if you click the source button right here you can actually embed this video into your uh, custom page so let me just center that up save and preview and now here is this very poorly designed custom page with that video embedded so that's another way you could do that as well Thea well, I've got a lot of people saying hi in the chat, so let me go back through the chat really quick and make sure I say hi to everybody who's uh, joining us here. So, uh, Shark, welcome back. Good, to, Always good to have you here. Um, let's see. Gene, first timer here. Just started using Zenfolio, and so far I'm, pr I'm impressed. That is great to hear, Gene. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully you join us each week and learn a little bit more about Zenfolio and really learn how to become successful using your Zenfolio site. But thanks for joining us. Glenn, hey everybody watching from Long Island. Hey Glenn from Long Island, thanks for joining us here. Also, uh, Morton from Norway. I think you were with us one time before, Morton. Thanks for coming back and uh, hanging out with us again. Uh, so guys, um, if you've got questions, just throw them out in the chat. I'll take as many as I can. We're going to do this till 3. Um, and I've also got some email questions that I need to get to. Also, if you're watching on Facebook, just leave a comment on the video and uh, give us a question, and we'll take that live as well. All right, let me hop back over here. Let's see. Do I have any questions in the chat right now? Oh, man, Glenn says we're in the middle of a blizzard right now. Man, I hate... To I hate to hear that, Glenn. Although I'm in North Carolina, so I would really, I, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more snow than we got. Uh, right now, we're getting a lot of crazy winds, and uh, it's it's just kind of blowing my trash can down the road, actually. Um, Sarah, hey Sarah, thanks for uh, joining us here. Thea, awesome, good. I'm glad that helps. So, um, yeah, you, like I said, you could upload the videos into a gallery, 
or you can embed them in a custom page. Either way, it's going to work great for you. All right, let's go ahead and um, go to an email question here. Actually, I want to talk about something real quick that just came out this week. Um, it's called pre-filled packages. And actually, I've got a link to it right here. Let me copy this link. Let's see if I can copy this link here. I'm going to copy this link right here and paste it out in the chat. Um, so it's something that came out this week. It's pre-filled packages. And what it is, is if you've never sold packages before or never actually gone through the process of creating packages, if you go to, you're not going to be able to see it in my account here because I have created packages before. But if you just opened up a trial, for those of you guys who've got brand new accounts and never looked at the packages feature, if you go right here to selling and click on packages you're now going to see some pre-filled packages in here so it's right here um i think there's like three or four um you know this was made so it would be a kind of a template for you to use to kind of see the different options that you have um, as far as uh, using packages on Zenfolio and offering those for sale to your clients. So that's something pretty cool that came out this week. Make sure you check out the blog post for details. Um, let me just go ahead and jump back in the chat really quick and see what questions we got. All right, so Sarah says, how do I add text to a page? So if you are setting up a client gallery and you want to add some, maybe some text to that gallery, maybe to communicate some specific instructions, um, maybe do a link or something like that, you can actually do this in the caption and it's a really useful place to do it because like I said, you can also include links and things like that. So let me show you how to do that really quick, Sarah. Uh, and if that's not what you're looking for, please clarify in the chat and I'll be happy to go um, Try to try to do better at explaining what it is you're you're wanting to do. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some information to a gallery caption. So I'm gonna go to photos right here, and then let's just go to this clients gallery right here, and let's click on this Smith one right here. Okay, um, so if you look over here on the right under gallery details, you can see that there's a caption field right here. And it's already, you can see, I already see I put some text in here. So I took some text and I put some text in here and I actually, I made a link. So what I did was I went to the um, place where this shoot was, actually got their web address, copied it. And then what I did was I made a link to it. So if you want to add a link in there as well, you can do that. You just click on the text that you want to link, click this little link button right here, and then you can paste the URL. So anyway, once you've got information in this caption section right here, so again, that's on the photos page, click on the gallery, and then go to gallery details and paste it in the caption right here. Once you've got that text in there, just hit done. And then the next thing you want to do, Sarah, is you want to make sure that that caption is set to show in the gallery. So what we're going to do is we're going to Hover over preview right here and click on customize. Um, so this is how you get directly to customize view for a specific gallery. You just click on the gallery, hover over preview and click customize. Okay, so now next we wanna make sure that that caption that we created is set to show. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to options right here. And I'm gonna uncheck the use default options, go to page elements, and it's in the third section right here. It says caption right here. We're just gonna make sure that that's set to show. And then I'm going to center this up right here. Scroll down to the very bottom and click apply. And so now what you're gonna see is you're gonna see that text that I added in the gallery caption. That's gonna show up at the top of the page right here. And um, currently this theme is not really set up very good for links because there's not really a, a difference. It doesn't have it underlined. That's definitely a theme issue and I could change that. But if I clicked right here, you can see this is going to open up a link in a new page to that venue location. Um, so that's how you would add text to like a gallery or something like that. Hopefully that's what you were looking for, Sarah. If it's not, please just definitely let me know in the chat and I will be happy to go further and uh, until I get the right answer for you. All right, let's go back to the dashboard really quick. Oh, while I'm here too, anytime you're making changes in a gallery, always remember that you've got to click this publish button up here before it goes live. Okay, let me go 
back to my dashboard really quick and let's see what other questions we've got coming through in the chat here. All right, so it looks like uh, I've got Gene says, does the size of the image I display, say medium, for example, accept the, affect the quality of the products I sell or does Zenfolio use the file size I upload for product and shipping? So, Gene, anytime you upload um, a photo to Zenfolio, when it's ordered to be uh, a for a print or something like that, we're going to use uh, the full resolution version um, for the for the prints and products and things like that. Um, so, the display size, what you're talking about here, is if you go to gallery access. And then you go on photo protection tab right here. These display si sizes right here, um, those are only used on your website. And the reason that we have those display sizes is so your site loads faster. And it's also um, so people can't take high resolution screenshots. But that's not going to affect at all. Um, that's not going to affect at all what is used for your prints and products. It's only what's displayed on the actual uh, website. The full resolution file will be used for prints. Uh, so I hope that clarifies that for you, Gene. All right, let me jump back here and see. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, so Shark says, can I change the prices of the on the pre-filled package, packages? I sell my work for bank. Yeah, absolutely, Shark. So um, like I said, unfortunately, I don't have the pre-filled packages on this account. Um, because I've definitely created uh, packages here, but you can just go up to selling right here and then click on packages and then just find one of those pre-filled packages that you want to change the price for. Click on it and then you should be able to go to products and then once this loads on a second there we go okay so once this loads you're gonna scroll down to the bottom of the page and that's where you can actually change the price of that package so it's gonna be selling price right here you can definitely go in and change any of these on the pre-filled packages uh, to whatever you want so if you're selling stuff you know if you're making bank man go change it and make some bank alright let me get back to my dashboard here and let's see okay um, so Glenn says, do you think you can explain the difference between putting your photos into all photos versus under the portfolio section? And why would you want to group photos into several many different galleries? Pros and cons. Absolutely. So um, if you think about, let me just go into my organizer here really quick. Um, so if you think about let me just get to browser view so we can see better. You think about the all photographs group right here. This is kind of like, think about your computer. So this is kind of like the main hard drive area of your computer. And then what you want to do is from there, you want to really make it easier on yourself because most photogra as photographers, most of the time, we're going to have um, several different types of galleries. We're going to have a portfolio gallery that's designed for, you know, to be shown on our homepage to make sure that anybody can access it and see our work and things like that. And uh, so it's a lot easier to locate those galleries to make sure that things are set up correctly for those galleries if you create, you know, a portfolio group instead of just having everything in one folder. So if you created a portfolio group, like in 2016, I've got a portfolio group right here. And then inside of that group, I've got several different portfolio galleries. And, you know, starting off at first, keeping things organized as you add more galleries and things like that is just going to make things so much easier for you in the long run. Um, so, you know, another reason to do this too is because those portfolio galleries, right? So we talked about we have we're going to have different types of galleries. Those portfolio galleries, we want them to be open. We want them to be public. We want everybody in the world to access those and take a look at our work. Um, then it's going to come to client galleries, right? So you're going to have client galleries and not always, but sometimes your client galleries or your clients may want their gallery to be password protected. Um, and things like that, you know, so that just they can access it. And it's a lot easier to section off your account and have a specific folder 
for those kinds of galleries so you know exactly where they are you know exactly what the settings should be and they don't get confused with you know public galleries and things like that um, there's actually a couple of great tutorials on the YouTube channel. There's one that goes over organization and how to organize your account using the groups, galleries, and collections. Um, and then there's also another tutorial. Actually, there's two other tutorials that I would definitely recommend checking out. Uh, the other one is called Getting Your Clients to Their Galleries. And so that's going to go over three different ways that you can get your clients to their actual client galleries. Um, and then the last video that I would suggest uh, for you, Glenn, would be maybe checking out the creating a secure client gallery. That's going to show you like um, if you do any sensitive subject matter or maybe you shoot schools and the parents just really want their galleries, uh, you know, password protected. So not just anybody can find them. That gallery or that video is going to show you how to make sure that you're setting up those security set, uh, settings correctly so that you know nobody that's not supposed to be in those galleries get in there. But uh, I would definitely recommend right now, like if you don't have a lot of stuff in your account, start making a structure in there and start organizing things because as the years go on and you add more stuff in there, you're really gonna be thankful that you started organizing it from the beginning versus showing up and opening an all photographs folder up to 500 galleries and having to sort through there and find a specific one. Um, so that's my take on it. Um, it's definitely personal preference, but yeah, I would definitely strongly recommend going with a good, strong organization for that. All right, let's see. Morton says, a lot of my pictures are from Norway, and if I want to sell them, I guess I don't want to buy my prints because it's too costly for them to get shipped and tax and stuff. A lot of my, let me see if I can understand what you're asking here. And I, if I want to sell them, I guess they don't want to buy prints because it's too costly for them. Uh, Morton, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Um, let's see. So if I have to have to sell different sizes, do I have to upload different sizes? Yeah, we can, so we can talk about that. Let me get into Sarah's question. And Morton, if you could clarify a little bit on that first question, or maybe it was just a statement. Um, either way, I'd be glad to help you out. Uh, let me get to Sarah, and then I can definitely answer that second question about the different sizes. So Sarah says, that was very helpful and answered another question I had, but I wanted to know how to add text or a new text box on my, box on my webpage. For example, my contact or my homepage. Yeah, so um, some of the built-in pages don't offer a lot of um, a lot of customization as far as like adding new text boxes and things like that. So um, what I would recommend is if you're wanting to customize the uh, contact page, you've got kind of two options. If I go to settings right here, um, and I go to where's it at? Right here, contact information. There is right here other this other box right here and if whatever information you put in there that will also show up on your contact page. But if you want to really customize the contact page, add a lot more text boxes and things like that, you're going to want to go with a custom page to do that. Um, and if you go to, let me just throw that out there really quick. Let me get this link. Actually, I can just show you really quick. So if we go to white goldphotography.com and let me throw this out there for you guys to see if we go to whitegoldphotography.com this is actually a Zenfolio demo page Sarah and if you go up to custom pages right here you can see all of the different things that you can do with custom pages but one of the coolest pages on here is actually the custom contact page so if I go to this contact page right here you can see this contact page was actually made I think through like JotForm but with a contact with a custom contact page, you can really customize the look of your pages and add text information anywhere you want. Um, so, like I said, if you want to really customize that contact page, I would definitely go with a um, custom contact page. Now, for the home page, you can use a custom page for your home page. But the home pages do offer a little bit of space where you can add some text and things like that. Um, so this is going to depend on your layout, but let me go ahead and just get to my home page. Uh, so what we're going to do is hover over my Zenfolio and click on customize website right there.
Okay, so I this this right now this my website's completely a mess or this test account's completely a mess. So let me just start over really quick. What I'm gonna do is hit the site preset really quick, apply this site preset, and get this page looking back to being somewhat normal looking. Okay, so now we've got somewhat of a normal looking page here. Um, I know I've got watermarks on the homepage image and that looks pretty awful. Um, so forgive me for that. But um, if you wanna add maybe uh, a text box on the uh, homepage, like I said, it's gonna depend on what layout you use, but you have the option of using your welcome message. So if you go to options right here, and then on page elements, come down and find where it says welcome message and you can set that to show and then you can actually go in here and type some information in here really quick. Uh, so let's just type in, hello, this is my welcome message. And just apply that. And then depending on the layout that you have, this is gonna show up in different places um, and things like that. So definitely the welcome message is an option that you have. Now you can see that text right here. Um, if you go up on the home page and you click layout, you can kind of see, so this this is the layout that I'm using right here, and here's that welcome message. So you can kind of scroll through these layouts and see which layouts offer some space for text to show up right there. Um, so that's what I would recommend doing if you really want to show some more text on the home page. Definitely just go in and check out the layouts and see which one kind of offers some text spaces there. And then you're going to want to make sure that obviously that that welcome message is set to show. And then just go into options and the welcome message tab and uh, you can put your information in there. Another thing that's really cool about the welcome message while we're talking about it is you can embed things in the welcome message. So anytime you see this button right here that says source, you can click that and you can now put in custom code. So if we wanted to embed a YouTube video or something like that on the welcome message, I think there might be a size limitation, um, so a video might not be the best thing to do, but you can definitely embed like custom uh, social media badges or social media icons, maybe some badges that you've won, some awards that you've won, you can definitely embed those on the welcome message by clicking that source. And just to clarify too, we do offer space for you guys to put custom code and things like that. But um, if the custom code kind of messes the page up or something like that, unfortunately, we can't really offer any technical support on the custom code and we're just going to tell you that you probably just should just remove it if it's not working right. So just be aware of that. Uh, while we do offer you a place to enter that custom code, uh, unfortunately we can't offer any technical support on the actual custom code itself. Alright, so let me get back to my dashboard here. Man, I love all the questions we're getting in the chat today. Uh, the email questions people are not going to be very happy. <laughs> um, Alright, so let me see here. Uh, so let me get back down to Morton. He said, so let's see. Morton says, where did it go? So if I have to sell different sizes, do I have to upload different sizes? Absolutely not. So you can, I, my recommendation is, hey, if your internet speed can handle uploading a bunch of the full resolution files, upload the full resolution files and then when somebody orders a print at a different size um you know zenfolio is going to handle that for you um if you if you allow your clients to crop obviously they'll be able to crop it but it's going to be printed at that size you don't have to upload the different sizes to accommodate that now um there is a video it's called uh creating your own price list and i would definitely recommend checking that out on the youtube channel because uh what i do is i walk through creating a price list and it tells you kind of some of the best practices and if you're going to upload photos and sell them at different sizes one of the things that you probably want to keep in mind is uh what's the native aspect ratio that the images are coming out of your camera you, it's a good idea to know that and then to also know what's the largest size that your full resolution images can be printed at before there's any kind of resolution issues. That's a good thing to know as well. And then usually what I do is, so when I'm building a price list for myself, I take the native aspect ratio of my camera and I build my price list based on products that fit within that aspect ratio. That way uh, there's never any cropping issues and everything just fits. And so that would be my recommendation to you, Glenn, is just to think about um, 
think about the the uh, aspect ratio of your images that are coming out of your camera or if you're doing panos or something like that and just kind of build your price list around that um okay so glenn says just so to be clear we girlfriend and i are looking to sell the photos that she takes she's an avid amateur photographer but we are not for hire so i don't think we need client galleries yeah absolutely i mean especially you know um if you're looking to sell the photos you know um i would probably still really work on some organization because maybe right now maybe you guys aren't for hire right now um but you know hopefully eventually down the road maybe that's the goal and um eventually you're probably going to run into some situations to where somebody wants to hire you for a shoot and they want their gallery to be password protected so if nothing else at least knowing how to do that when you need to be able to organize like that would be uh would be a really good thing to to do um hey todd welcome back glad to see you here uh let's see man it's taking me a little while to work down the chat here one more question. When I see a four by six in size, can I change it to centimeters? Yeah. So if you're building a price list and uh, you want to work with centimeters versus inches, you can definitely do that. Let me show you how to do that really quick. So we're going to go to browser only and I'm going to go to selling right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on price list. And then I'm just going to pretend like I'm still working on this demo list right here. And if I go to add products right here, I can click on settings and I can switch over to centimeters rather than inches. So that's in the settings right there. So if I go add products over on the right, right here, settings, you can switch over to inches. That way it, um, it'd be a little bit easier for you and you don't have to try to convert everything. I know for me, anytime I'm working on somebody who's selling in centimeters, it's always uh, so hard for me to do all the conversions and things like that. I'm like, I don't know what this print size is. So usually I try to just uh, go in and switch it and then switch it back. But yep, it's right there in settings. You can definitely do that without a problem. Okay, uh, let's see. Todd says, I wonder if I have the record for the most images. Hmm. I don't know if I can officially uh, release that information or not, Todd, but I would definitely love to uh, check out your account and see where you're at in the rankings. So shoot us an email, man. I'll check it out and see. Um, see where you're at for sure. Uh, let's see. It was part one of two because the text was too long. Hmm. I'm not sure what you're talking about there, Morton. I probably need to catch up in the chat. So let's see. Um, Aurora said, I'm, I hope I said that right. Aurora says, do you know if Zenfolio is planning to use us? Let us use the Facebook pixel code soon. Man, uh, so we've got a lot of email questions in about that. Um, you know, I wish I had a really definitive answer. Unfortunately, I don't. I know it's definitely something that we are looking at. Um, and, you know, if you go to the user voice forum, uh, I don't know if Cheryl can throw that link out. If you go to the user voice forum, I'm sure that somebody has probably suggested that. And if they haven't suggested that yet on the user voice forum, somebody please do go and suggest that and everybody go vote on that. Um, cause that's definitely going to make the, um, chances of that getting, um, in there, um, better, you know, on the user voice form. Um, so, you know, like I say, we're always looking for improvements. We're always looking for ways that we can make things better and to better serve you guys, the photographers. Um, and unfortunately I just don't have a real definitive answer for that specific question. All right. Um, Matt says in my store, when I click the photo, the photo is center of the page. The text for the photo is on the right side and does not look good. How can I fix this? Matt, so um, I'm not quite sure. Let's see. In my store, when I click the photo, the photo is the center of the page. The text on the photo is to the right side of the page. Ah, yeah. So probably um, it's probably the way that your gallery is set up really quick. So let me go to my photos page here. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to yell on the mic. Let me go to my photos page and then um, let's click on just one of these galleries here. Let me switch over to my browser view and 
We're just going to go right into customize view. Um, and it, it's going to depend too. So that's kind of, I'm going to do the best that I can, but I almost kind of need to specifically see the account to see exactly what's going on, um, there. So, um, but I'm guessing probably what's happening is either you've got this, which is the uh, new shopping experience quick shop right here, where this is like this, and this is over here. Or, um, yeah, Matt, so if you can just clarify a little bit, because I, cause I would I'd like to have a better starting point. Are you not seeing the thumbnails page at all? Um, when you go to your galleries or are you, um, seeing something different that, you know, something different, like maybe, let's see if I go to the gallery photos, maybe are you seeing something like this where your images are set to the center? Let's change this layout really quick. Maybe you're seeing something like you're set to the center and... All this stuff is off to the right or something like that yeah if you could just clarify just a little bit more um and let me know i'd be happy to help with that question it sounds like it's probably just a layout issue um and as soon as i kind of understand what i'm working with i'd be more than happy to help you out with that um and two you know if we can't figure it out today you could definitely shoot me an email um you know, you guys can definitely shoot me an email. Just go to zenfolio.com forward slash contact. In the subject line, put YouTube live question. Reach out to me, Matt, and I will definitely get back to you and work with you and help get that gallery kind of sorted out and looking the way that you want if we can't do it today. All right. Um, so let's see. Aurora says, great. Thanks. And yes, you said my name right. Awesome. All right. I always worry about saying people's names wrong. Uh, Morton says, by selling digital images, do I have to upload different sizes if I wanted to sell different sizes of the digital images or does Zenfolio fix it for me like prints? Um, so when you want to sell digital images, um, still man, just go ahead and upload those full resolution files because what you're going to do is you actually have to create the digital products. And so it's going to depend on the types of digital products that you create as to what your client can purchase. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just one second here. All right, so we're going to go to selling right here. And then we're going to click on digital products. And forgive my internet, it's going to be a little bit slow. But like I said, Morton, so... um. It's going to depend on the type of digital product that you set up. Zenfolio, definitely, when your clients order, we definitely make the digital image fit whatever they ordered. So you're going to go to Add Product right here. And then um, you would obviously just want to give it a title, whatever you want, like full resolution. And then you're going to go right here to Image Dimensions. And this is where you actually set this up. So right now, this is going to be for the original um the original file as you uploaded it, if somebody buys this product, that's exactly what they're going to get is the full resolution original file. Um, you can switch this though. You can go to a high resolution, which is like five megapixels. You can also go to a low resolution, which is like one megapixel and like that for like Facebook and things like that. Or you can actually go and put in specific dimensions with cropping. So you can go specific dimensions with cropping and enter those specific dimensions. And then our system is going to crop that for you um, and send that. And that's to be the file that your client would download. So like I said, you upload the full resolution files, go in, set up your digital products, you know, the way that you want your clients to purchase them and offer them. And then when they purchase them, depending on what they purchase is going to be what they download, you know, from a full resolution to whatever like this. If you set up a specific dimension, um, that's available there as well. But that's all taken care of, care of for you there within the system. All right, so let me go back to my dashboard here. Um, hope that helped Morton and if you got any more questions definitely please guys keep throwing them out in the chat This is awesome uh, to see this many questions coming through in the chat Okay, so let me get to an email question before my email people feel like I have abandoned them really quick So hold on one second here um, Let's see Can I create a password protected custom page um not really 
Um, so you can't really put like a password on a custom page, um, but you can prevent that custom page from being indexed by search engines. And then the only way that anybody would have access to it is if they had the direct link. Um, so let me show you how to do that really quick. We go up to website right here and click on custom pages. Um, let me just click on this page right here. And then when you're going and creating a custom page and things like that, guys, there's this option right here that says um, allow indexing by search engines. If you uncheck that, this custom page is not going to show up in Google and things like that. Now, if you have our if this custom page has already been created and it's been around like that for a little while and that option was checked then if you come and uncheck this it might take Google a little bit of time to realize that that's been done re-index your site and remove that from the search results uh, so if you want a custom page to not show up in Google search results make sure that you uncheck that option when you create it um, now since we're talking about custom pages and password and protecting it um, the other thing you, I might suggest is you know if you really need to have a password protection on it what you could do is you could just create the document in like Photoshop make like a landscape um, you know image document with whatever information maybe you want to um, show your um, print pricing or maybe uh, you want to show your session fees but you want somebody to you want to control who sees that you can make that in Photoshop export it as an image and then actually just upload it into a gallery by itself password protect it um, you can turn off the thumbnails tab or the thumbnails page have it load right directly in to the photo page and then basically it would be like a password protected custom page uh, let me show you how to do that really quick so if I go back to the dashboard um, I don't really have uh, a good image to use so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pretend that let me see if I can find something in here um, let's see what do I have here okay so let's just pretend that this is a custom page that I made in Photoshop um, it's got my print pricing on it my session fees maybe some of my favorite locations and things like that all that information is on this image and what I want to do is set this up to where it's password protected so only uh, somebody can um, so only the people who I give the password to can access it um, so what you're gonna do to do that is just go to gallery access right here Uncheck that use default, put on lock with a password, and then just give this thing a password. Go down here and save that. And then what you want to do after that is I would probably change up the gallery style a little bit. Uh, so instead of it going to a thumbnails page, you could have it load directly to a photo page. Um, and that's going to make it really big and on the center of the screen. Now, if you want to do that, the first thing you'll probably want to do is turn off the price list. So I'm just going to turn that off really quick. Hit save here. And then what we're going to do is hover over preview. Go to customize then we're going to turn off that thumbnails page so when somebody goes to this gallery they enter the password they're going to go right to the photos page and this is going to be nice and big on the screen all right so what we're going to do is go to options right here click on the thumbnails page uncheck this use default actually disable the thumbnails page like that right there and just hit save or apply sorry it's apply All right, so now that we've done that, what's going to happen is it's actually going to make this load into the gallery photos page rather than the um, the thumbnails page. So let me get to the gallery photos page, and what we want to do is customize this a little bit here. Um, so what we want to do, and actually it looks like, so if you notice, right, I turned off the thumbnails page, and it should have loaded directly to this gallery photos page. Um, and if you guys remember, I also turned off the price list, but there's still a buy button showing up here. So I think what's going on is actually that this photo has a different price list applied to it, and that's why it's not uh, following suit. So let me go back to my dashboard really quick. We're going to leave these, leave this where it's at. 
And if you guys ever have that happen where you change settings for the gallery, but some of the photos just don't seem to be following suit, what you want to do is just check and make sure that those photos are following the same settings as the gallery. So you can click on it right here. Now, as you can see, the access is following same as gallery. That's why it went to be password protected. But the price list is different. I removed the price list earlier, but now the, on the photo, the price list is still there. So what I'm going to do is click that and then choose same as containing gallery and hit save. So now let me go back to customize view. And now this should load right into the photo page rather than trying to go to quick shop. And it also shouldn't show any buy buttons anymore. So you can see now it's not trying to go in quick shop and that buy button is gone. So now what I want to do is let's just change this layout. I'm just going to actually do a full screen layout here on this because again, we're pretending that this is a custom page that's got print pricing and things like that. And we want to password protect it where people can just go there and see the information. So we've got that full screen showing right there. Then we can go to options. We can, uh, you know, you can hide the page header if you wanted. Um, we can hide the title, hide the caption, um, hide the slideshow button, hide the share button, and then click apply. And so now when somebody goes to that link and enters the password, they're just going to go right here and see this image or this document or whatever it was. And so that would be kind of a way to create a custom page that's password protected, but it's not really a custom page. And obviously the last thing you would want to do is publish it. All right, let me get back to my dashboard here. All right, so let's see here. All right, I know I'm going to say the name wrong. Hey, Sergi from the Ukraine. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I remember you guys, you're hanging out with us before. So I'm glad to have you back. Um, let's see. Awesome. Looks like Cheryl emailed Matt. So that's perfect. Um, let's see here. Thea, um, I think we do some in-person stuff sometimes. Uh, Cheryl put that link out there. So definitely check that out. Um, and obviously, you know, if you guys think that would be something you would enjoy, definitely email in and, uh, you know, request that. That would be great. I would love to come do some in-person stuff. Um, is there a way to omit the shopping cart of the on the thumbnails page so that the shopping cart would only be on the quick shop page only? Would work good for landscape photographers with featured products list. Um... So there's not really a way to remove it from the thumbnails page. If you have a price list on the um if you have a price list on the gallery, it's going to definitely it's going to show that buy button on the thumbnails page. Um so there's not really a way to remove it from the thumbnails page. Now you can definitely lower the um, lower what's there. So like you could definitely remove some of the buying footprints. For instance, um, if you have a buy button showing over your images, you can remove that from the uh, the gallery. Let me show you how to do that. Just switch over to browser here. Okay, um, so what we're gonna do is let's see, let's just pick a gallery here with a um a price list assigned to it. Well, since you mentioned landscape, I think I've got a landscape gallery right here. And we can just throw a price list on this thing really quick. So if we go to price list right here and then choose allow ordering from price list, we'll just choose that demo list, go down and hit save, and then let's go check out this gallery and customize view and see what we can do to it. Okay, so in the gallery here, like you're saying, um, you want to be able to remove the buy the uh, the the um, price list. Unfortunately, you can't remove it from just the thumbnails page. But if you've got um, if you've got like a buy button showing here, you can definitely remove that stuff. You can definitely minimize some of the stuff that's shown up here. Unfortunately, there's no way to turn that buy button off. That would be a really cool feature request. So um, as Cheryl's already thrown out that feature request link. Definitely hit that up and make the request to be able to just to turn the buy button off. 
But at the moment, unfortunately, you're going to have to just either remove the price list or live with the buy button showing right here. Now, like I said, you can definitely remove this buy button right here from the thumbnails page. So if I go to options, uncheck use default right here, we can go to thumbnails and the buy button right here. You can set this to hide um, and you can also hide this other stuff, too. So you can actually hide like this. You can hide the title. Um, you could hide all these social media icons if you wanted and things like that um, and just really sterilize the gallery make it nice and simple um, and then we're just going to click apply and that's going to remove all that stuff that's showing over the images and things like that right here so now you can see when I hover over the image none of that stuff comes up there's no buy button and stuff like that now we could go up here and hide the rest of this stuff so if we go to options and page elements we can set that all this stuff to hide let's see let me slow down share photos hide slideshow hide the share button to hide um all of this stuff you can hide all of this stuff right here go down and hit apply and then that's going to remove most of those buttons up there unfortunately except for that buy button right there so that buy button is going to stay there that's like the one thing that you can't independently remove without removing the price list but at least this cleans up the gallery a little bit more john and makes it a little bit more um you know visually appealing i think if you're a landscape photographer uh without all the stuff showing up over it so anyway i hope that helps a little bit Definitely reach out and make that uh, that feature request on being able to remove just that buy button. All right, let me get back to my dashboard really quick here. All right, uh, let's see what questions we got here. Thea says, I'm in the Johnston City area. Man, I love Tennessee. Tennessee is a beautiful state. Beautiful, beautiful state. All right, Donna says, how do I set up self-fulfillment only? We are a lab and we will do all of our own printing. So you can absolutely do this. The first thing that you're going to need to do is create your self-fulfilled products. Then you're going to need to set up. Well, actually, I, what you need to do is first set up your shipping methods, then create your self-fulfilled products. And then from there, you can just create a price list with only the self-fulfilled products on that. So what we're going to do is let me just jump into my browser view. And we are going to go right into selling right here. And that's a great question, Donna. We get this question a lot in emails. A lot of people want to know how do I self-fulfill only. Um, so it's a great question. I'm glad you asked because I definitely um, think this is something worth going over and showing people how to do. Um, so right here in selling, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to self-fulfilled products right here. And you're going to have two little tabs over here on the left, the list of products and the shipping methods. So let's go to shipping methods real quick. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete these right here really quick. Um, so let's talk about the shipping methods. When you go to add a shipping method, what you need to think and consider these is this shipping method is going to be one speed. So right now I'm going to add um, just standard, standard shipping. And then you need to make sure that you set a price for standard shipping for each package size that you're going to be shipping. Um, if you don't think that you're going to be using extra large packages or bulky or bulky packages, I personally would recommend while you're here, just going ahead and setting up a price for all of these. That way later on when you maybe add something that ships in a bulk a bulky package, you don't have to try to remember to come back and fix this. It'll already be done for you. So what you're going to do is just click here. And let's just say for small packages, I am going to charge uh, $3 for shipping that way. Um, and then what I'm going to do is you can also determine how many numbers of items will fit in a small package. So let's say you're saying that four by sixes ship in a small package and we can fit up to uh, 10 four by sixes in a small package. That number is probably way off. I'm just throwing some random numbers out there. Next, we're going to do the same exact thing for medium packages. So obviously this is going to be a little bit more expensive, but this time you can also determine how many, uh, number of items will fit in the package so let's say 15 but you can also determine how many small packages will fit inside this medium package so we're just going to say two and then from there it's going to be repeat the same process for each package size so next moving up we're going to say 10 
15 and 2. And then extra large, I'm going to say 15, 15 and 2. And then for the bulky package, we are going to say 20. And I'm going to say 10 and 2. And so now the last thing we need to do is come down here. And this is very important. If you're going to be selling in other currencies, make sure that you add all the available shipping destinations in. So right here, uh, I'm just going to add the U.S., but if you were going to uh, also, you know, ship to Canada, Europe, or things like that, make sure you add all of those countries in that you're going to plan on shipping to. Okay, so now we've got the shipping method created for standard shipping. If you want to offer your clients uh, a couple of choices, like maybe priority shipping, maybe overnight shipping, you would just need to recreate a shipping method for each one of those that you want to offer. Okay, so now we've got that done. Let's go and create a product. So what we're going to do is on the products right here, just go to add product. And then we're just going to give this one a title. So I'm just going to say uh, 4 by 6 right here, 4 by 6 print. Um, if you have an internal product ID, if you are that organized and I am not, then you could definitely put that internal product ID right here. Also, you know, it's a good idea to give it a description. You know, if you're if it's a special paper type that you're printing on or something like that, you can definitely put that description in here. So I'm just going to say standard. If I can spell print just something like that. Obviously, you want to give it some more uh, clarifications so that your clients understand exactly what they're purchasing. Um, next, you go down here to product currency. Right now, I've got US dollars. Um, if you're going to sell in multiple currencies, you will have to create a product per each currency that you want to sell in. So currently, if I am selling, if I'm creating this 4x6 for US dollars, I would then have to turn around and create a 4x6 for Canadian dollars, for the euro, and so forth. Um, so next, you want to put your base price. Now, this is what the product costs you to print. Um, and so for this, let's just say this cost me, um, let's say it cost me six cents. Now, when you get your order reports, it's actually going to show like this six cents is being taken out, but we are not taking that six cents from you. What we're doing is actually on the order report, we're showing that six cents being taken out because you've said that that's how much it costs. And we want to give you a, um, you know, as a, uh, a um man i can't think of the word a uh, good report of what your actual profit is that six cents is still going to be deposited into your paypal account um or your merchant account depending on whatever you set up to sell um but we do just show it being taken out so that you get an accurate report of what your actual profit is um next right here you can upload some placeholder images i'm not really going to do that um you can add categories now this is important since this is a print what i'm going to do is go here edit i'm just going to go print small print and um hit select all right next we're just going to go down here and then for the number of items required for this product, this is going to be like if you're selling a collage or something like that, then you would want to put more numbers in here. But if you're just selling a single 4x6 print, leave both of these numbers set to 1. You can set a required resolution right here if you want. And then you can also do the aspect ratio and cropping. So for this, since we know it's a 4x6, we're going to do 4x6 right here. And then if you want to allow your clients to rotate and choose between a portrait orientated 4x6 or a landscape orientated 4x6, just make sure that you check this option right here to allow cropping uh, the rotating. Next, we're going to decide what this product ships in. So we said this is a 4x6. It's definitely going to be shipping in that small package right there. Now we're going to click Save. So you would then need to go back and repeat that process for all of the products that you want to offer through self-fulfillment. And then after that, you're just going to go to selling and price list right here. And then what you're going to do is just click add blank price list. And then what I would recommend calling this so that you know that it's your products is I would probably name it something like self-fulfill price list or our price list, just something so you know that this is the price list that offers your products only. 
So I'm just gonna do um self fulfilled price list. Now next we're gonna click add products right here. And then here's what you want to do. You want to go up to show right here where it says all vendors. Click on that. Choose your studio name. And then this is going to be only the self-fulfilled products that you have created. So I'm going to go prints. There's that four by six print right there. I can hit add selected product. And then this is where you're actually going to set the pricing. So you can use a pricing formula right here and do a percentage based markup based on that six cents that you said this costed if it's going to do a 300 percent markup or you can go here and you can decide hey i know i want to make three dollars off of a four by six print and this is going to automatically adjust your selling price or you could go here and say man i know i can sell the four by six for at least four bucks so i'm going to put four bucks right there and that's going to tell you how much you're going to get so after you do that, the one thing you are going to notice is that anytime you add a self-fulfilled product, it is going to stay in the other products category, even if you designated it to show in like a prints category. Uh, the reason that is, is because most of the time people mix these. And so what we wanted was we wanted it to stay in the other products category. So it's easy to find the self-fulfilled products in a mix of other products from other vendors. So it's definitely when your clients go to purchase it, it's going to show in the correct product category that you designated, but in the price list, um, it's going to show in other products. Okay. So now basically what you would do is just build those self-fulfilled products and then create a price list with just the self-fulfilled products on it. And then once you're finished, click save. And now this is the most important step right here. What you would want to do is actually probably, I would even suggest doing this before you do anything else. Going to settings right here and then going to selling because what you need to do is you need to designate how you want to get paid for your self-fulfilled products. So settings, selling, collecting payments, and then right here you need to choose one of these options. By default, it's on none. I will collect payments for my orders after they're placed, but you can go in here and you can set up PayPal and collect payment through PayPal, or you can set up a merchant account. So please make sure that you do that part. Don't forget. Otherwise you're going to get these orders and you're going to be wondering where your money's at. Um, so again, settings, selling and collecting payments. All right. After you've done that, after you've got the price list created, all you need to do then is go and add that price list to a gallery. So to add a price list to the gallery, you just click on the gallery right here, go over to pricing and allow for ordering for my price list. Scroll down, find that price list and hit save right there. All right. So hopefully Donna, that helps you out and gives you an idea of how to do that. Um, unfortunately, I haven't got around to actually making a really good full tutorial on that. Um, but there's definitely tons of articles, help guide articles and the support center. Um, if you guys are ever in your account and you need help, if you want to, uh, if you have a question or something like that, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can click on support center right here and that will take you to where you can search our help guides and help articles. Also, if you click on the online training right here, that takes you to our YouTube account and there's tons of video tutorials and things like that. All right, let's see here. I've got like two more minutes. Um, let's see. I would like to show my fine art pr prints in, with different frames, switchable by the customers and also simulated in the interiors. What's the best way to do that? So unfortunately right now, Sergio, we don't really have a way to do that where it's switchable by the, by the clients. Um, you know, if that's something that you really want to do, you could probably just, uh, create those in Photoshop, maybe upload them to a gallery, and then you could put a uh, text in the caption with a link to that gallery. Um, I talked about this earlier, but you could put text uh, in a, a gallery caption with a link to the gallery where you've got the samples of how things look with different frames and things like that right into your selling gallery. And then your clients could go there and take a look and see how different things look. Unfortunately, that's something, like I said, that's something we don't have really a way to do that yet. But uh, again, that's a super awesome idea and we would love to have that. So if you haven't hit up the user voice forum and hit, hit it up with that, that's a great idea. Um, can I add printing stores from Norway? 
So for any any kind of thing that we we don't offer an integrated vendor for, you can definitely go the self-fulfilled product route. And then what you would have to do is just turn around and order that print directly from the store in Norway and, and get it delivered or shipped to your client. Uh, so that's the way you could do it, Morton, right there, how to do that. Um, let's see. I've got one, I've got like one minute left. Okay, yeah, so I, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to take any more questions today, guys. But I just want to say thank you to everybody who joined us today. It was an awesome day today. Um, we do this every week, same time, same place here on YouTube. So we would love to have you guys back. Bring your friends. Um, also on Facebook, thanks for joining us, guys. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure to click that orange Zenfolio icon in the bottom right-hand corner and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I release tutorials on Friday, so there's going to be a tutorial coming out tomorrow. Thank you guys again so much. I hope it was helpful, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week.